Smith, and this is Ziggy. He's a rough-coated collie, two years old. Um, um, we're going to show you some of the little pointers about taking care of this hair coat and trimming nails. Stuff you can do at home to keep up with this hair coat because these dogs are double-coated, heavy-coated dogs. And they do tend to get a lot of undercoat and they do get matted. By keeping the hair brushed, you keep the dog cooler and warmer. The hair is an insulator and its job is to protect the skin. This dog has lots of undercoat in the hips, all through here, all through the rough. So what we're going to show you how to do is take this out. And all you need are a few different tools. I like to use um, the Greyhound comb, or a lot of people like a rake. They're pretty much the same things, so that one has a handle, so it's a little easier on your hand. I like the slicker brush. I use this for most all my work. It helps to get out most of the coat first. Also, the pin brushes are nice because they have a nice feel to them and a small amount of teeth, which I like to work with a smaller amount of teeth than a larger amount. So you can get coat out with that. Then when we're all done, we're going to bathe him and we're going to dry him and we're going to show you how to take care of his feet and his ears. We're going to clean up his ears too. This breed um, is kind of high maintenance as far as coat care. It does require, I would recommend a brush at least once a week preferably every day, but many people can't find that time. But if you would do them every day, you would keep all this undercoat out and keep his hair really clean. This dog is quite dandruffy because he has so much undercoat, his skin can't breathe, so his oils aren't moving through his hair properly. So we're going to remove that and then hopefully get him on the right diet and proper brushing it will help eliminate all that dandruff too. So what I like to do is work when you're brushing a dog of this nature, you should work in sections. I like to start in the hip. Some people like to start up here. Whatever you do, work in a section at a time, and that way you'll know you get it. Also, if you have a dryer that you can dry at home with, a force type dryer, you don't have to pre-brush him before a bath. You can blow a lot of this hair out. But people that don't have a dryer will probably want to do a lot of the brushing prior to the bath. Because if you bathe and you don't dry properly, you can actually mat him up more. So. We'll start with the hip and show you a little bit what to do. I like to work at the bottom up because the bottom tends to be less matted. So if you'll start down here, I pull the hair up and brush down. This way I can see um, which coat or which hairs I've got and which ones I haven't. And like I said, if you don't get them completely brushed before the bath, you can do this after the bath and it's actually easier because the hair's been washed and cream rinsed and it's cleaner and it's easier to work on clean hair. But you'll see we're going to get lots of this down. <laughs> he's going to be a lot thinner looking when he's done. I just I always start with a slicker simply because it um, it gets a lot of the loose hair out first. So I'll go over my little section and can you zoom in here, Kathy, and see how show them how thick this is right now. So oh, right here, this is real. I can't get my fingers to touch his skin in here at all. And that's how I tell. I go through the coat with my fingers and I can feel the undercoat in there. But um, we're going to use lots of elbow grease right now. Just brush, brush. There's no real trick to this. And even in a grooming parlor, it's mostly just work. We learn to do it. We learn to do it faster than most people can do it at home. But it is just work. After I get a large amount of this out, I'll go back and use a comb. <laughs> Just another thing about brushing, if you brush too hard, and a lot of these tools are quite sharp, and if you don't brush properly, you can actually burn the skin, tear the skin, cut the skin. So, you know, you get, once, well, once you're working on this little heavy undercoat, you can't get to the skin, so you're probably not going to brush burn your dog until you get you get to the point where you've got a lot of that undercoat out. But brushing up helps to lift it out, I find. Yeah, that leg looks a lot better already. I mean, I can well, tell a huge difference. Right here, yeah, it just takes a lot. It takes, from start to finish, this dog will probably take us two to three hours today just because he's so coated. Once he's done and you maintain him, a bath and brush out can do an hour, hour and a half easily. If you have a dryer that's fast. <laughs> so if a, if a collie like this is inside outside, a rough coat of collie, um, it's best to have him professionally groomed how often uh, if they take care of his coat a few times a week with a brush at home? Well, you know, nowadays the soaps are mostly natural and if they're not 
full of detergents and they're a natural soap. You can bathe your dog weekly and it won't hurt the dog. Um, I, I recommend at least four to six weeks on most breeds because especially dogs living in the house, they start smelling. The feet will get odors to them, the coat starts smelling dirty. So, you know, just because he's living in the house, I recommend four to six weeks. But, you know, if you're doing a really good job at home, you can go eight to 12 if you're maintaining it at home in between. The big thing to me, I don't think it's fair for a dog to come in here with this kind of coat and get brushed to this extent all the time because it's not fun. I mean, they don't enjoy this. But, um, you know, it's necessary. We have to do this. But by doing it at home, you can eliminate a lot of this. Um, he has to stand here a long time and be handled a long time, and that's hard for some animals. They can't do it. And then especially your older dogs, they get arthritic, they hurt, a lot of them are blind, deaf, and this is very painful to them to stand here this long doing this. But the big thing is brushing. Learn to brush. Ask your groomer or, you know, uh, read about it. There's lots of information on the web. Now I'm going back with a, a rake, and I'm going to try to pick out some of this clumpy stuff. And as you're going through, you know, you can take your fingers and lift it up and you can feel, I can feel that this has been mm -hmm. brushed more than this has been brushed. And if you hit a really heavy clump like this, um, just in a professional shop, sometimes I use a thinning shear, which I know most people don't own, but they're a, two, they're a, they're a serrate, or they're a blade on one side and they're teeth on one side and they actually help thin it out. On a show coat, you would not want to do this because you're actually removing hair, but I sometimes go in and split up some of these bigger mats just because it speeds me up. It probably doesn't hurt the dog as much either, right? Right, but it will thin your coat out and it does actually cut hair, which, like I said, in a show dog, you don't want to do this. True. And even sometimes we have people bring these breeds in and they just get tired of this much hair and they will have us actually thin. You have the most hair around your ruff and your hip area, so they'll have us just thin this out every time we groom them just to keep them... Some, dog, some people, I noticed this dog has been actually shaved in here. He's just been neutered. Mm -hmm. um, but some people will like to shave this area out because it helps to keep it clean when they go to the restroom. But um, so you can see I can get this out a whole lot easier because I've busted some of it up pretty much. It will thin it out. And in a pet grooming situation, we'll go back and trim up the feet, trim up the hocks and the pasterns. And some people like this stuff to be shortened up. If not, we'll leave it natural. And this is another area that after he's done, we can scissor this down if you like. 